Hi Yogi and welcome to another slow flow class with me Oshana. In today's episode we are heading into our second week of back bending or front body openers as we might like to call them. Uh, that means that today is an improvers level flow. I'll still be giving you a lot of different options for various levels of experience and the thing I would really like you to focus on as we head into this class is the postures where you will be working against gravity. So so really sort of embrace the struggle as your back body muscles start to fire up in order to sort of avoid that gravitational pull and sort of memorize what that feels like because you'll need that muscle memory as we head into the next few weeks where we'll be deepening our back bends. And that's not just useful when you want to have super fancy back bends, but also in your everyday life. Those are the muscles that help support you in good Good posture when you're sitting in front of your laptop rounding forward. Um, so these are great postures to sort of alleviate some lower back pain over time but if you do deal with lower back pain then stay on the sort of softer side of these back bends. Um, in terms of props you shouldn't really need anything today and we'll be starting in a seated position in the center of our yoga mat so when you're ready join me there yogi. So once you arrive in the center of your mat, have the right shin in front of the left, or if you prefer, you can have right heel in front of the left instead. Bring the right hand to the outside of your hip, ground it all the way on the floor and soften that lower elbow. As you inhale, lift the left arm all the way up and overhead. And from here we'll paint really large circles with that left hand around the shoulder joint articulating through that movement slowly three times in one direction and finally here very smoothly reversing the direction of that movement going the opposite way three times on your next inhale using that top arm to bring yourself all the way through center to the opposite side, left hand down, soften the left elbow just a touch, lift the right fingertips up and overhead and three times painting that diagonal circle with your right fingertips around the shoulder. Noticing any areas where that movement becomes a little bit sticky and equally noticing areas of fluidity of that movement. And eventually again, reverse the circles after three rounds. Use the inhale to bring yourself back to center, release the hands onto your knees and we'll circle the head around the neck three times in each direction. Um, but if you can keep the teeth closed so that you're engaging the muscles in the neck and sort of protecting your head as you allow it to go back. So with the teeth closed. Unfortunately, I can't really teach you or talk to you. So close the teeth and circle the head. And again, after three rounds, gently, smoothly reversing the circles and going in the opposite direction for three rounds. And then lift the head back upright, bring your hands behind you and simply change the cross of your legs. So left chin can be in front of the right or possibly if you prefer heels in one line. From here we'll have again right hand to the floor, this time left hand comes behind the head, soften the bottom elbow, lift your left elbow up towards the ceiling and have a sense that you're pressing the head and hand towards one another here. As you exhale let the top elbow come towards your right knee, inhale to expand the chest and lift through your top arm, exhale to round down. Moving just one final time here on this particular side. As you inhale, come back up through center, take your other hand behind the head and interlace your fingers. 
Again, find that resistance of the head and hands moving towards one another. Let the elbows go wide, take an inhale. And on your next exhale, bring the elbows together. Let the chin round in towards the chest. Let the spine coil back. Inhale, rocking onto the fronts of your sitting bones. Let the chest lift, let the elbows go wide. And exhale, rounding in. One final time here, inhale to lift, expand the chest and exhale to coil everything in. On an inhale, come back to a seated position and simply change sides. So left hand goes past the left hip, soften the lower elbow, right hand is at the back of the head, pressing the head and hand into each other to engage the muscles in the neck and shoulders. Slowly take an in breath, Keep the chest open as you exhale, right elbow towards the left knee. Obviously it's not going to reach quite all the way there. Inhale to lift, possibly peering up towards the ceiling as you exhale, twisting towards the ground. Final time here, moving with the breath. And as you lift up here, bringing both hands behind the head, this time interlacing the unusual way, so that means one pinky finger over. When it feels uncomfortable, you're sort of in the right place. Again, head and hands move towards one another, elbows are wide, final time. Moving through this sort of seated cat-cow variation as you exhale, everything draws in towards the center line. And as you inhale, you lift and expand, opening into a slight back bend. Making this your final round here. Release the hands onto your knees when you're ready. And from here, we'll allow our, our left ear to drop towards, so the right ear to drop towards the right shoulder. And reach your left fingertips towards the ground with the palm facing forwards. And then really allow that left shoulder to drop away. Now, if you want to take this a little bit further, then turn your chin towards the right shoulder and let the right ear drop so the head tilts back and you deepen that stretch. And if you want to take this a little bit further still, then bring your right hand to the left side of the head. Allow the head to be heavy, deepening that stretch. On an inhale, release the hand from the head, come back to center and swap sides. So again, start by allowing initially just the left ear to drop towards the shoulder. Release the right arm down by your side, spin the palm to face forward and really let the shoulder drop. And you should already be feeling a little bit of a stretching sensation along the right side of the neck here. If you're going further, take the chin towards the left shoulder let the head tilt back by leaning your left ear back. And again, the full hog, you bring your left hand to the side of the head to give it a little bit of added weight and increasing that tension on the right side of the neck. Gently release the head first, find your way back to center. Now, if you have any knee issues, then simply spin the feet out to one side and find your way to tabletop that way. If you prefer to, and again, no knee problems, you can roll over your knees to come into a tabletop position. And either way, once you get there, briefly making sure that your knees are underneath your hips and the hands are underneath the shoulders. Briefly shifting your weight into the right hand so that you can lift the left arm and give the hand a really vigorous shake. So allow the hand to circle a few times in each direction, forwards and back, sideways. And slowly here, hover the hand for a moment just an inch off the floor before placing it all the way down. Same thing on the second side. So lean into your left hand, lift the right hand and give it a really vigorous shake. 
maybe find some circles in each direction, left, right, forward, back, making sure that you've really taken it across all the different planes of movement. Once you're done, hover the hand, slowly placing it back onto the ground. Tuck under your toes and when you're ready, having a sense that you're almost moving the body through mud as you exhale in slow motion, lift the knees, let the sitting bones draw up and back and find your way into downward facing dog. Our first downward dog of the practice, so do you have a little wiggle through the hips, maybe moving through the feet possibly stretching out the backs of the legs one at a time, bending the opposite knee, lifting high onto your tiptoes and descending the heels. Just any kind of movement that allows you to ease into the back body here before we begin. Gently walk your feet forward, bend the knees and plant the feet to the outside of your yoga mat. Let the knees bend generously and grab hold of one elbow in each hand, rocking side to side, let the head hang. Let the body find a little sway through the upper torso. And possibly a moment of stillness in the center, swap the arm, the forearm that's on top and give yourself a little nod of the head, yes. And a little shake of the head, no. Noticing any tension in the neck here. Before you slowly release the hands onto your shins and round the spine as you inhale, stacking one vertebra on top of the next as you come up to standing. Letting shoulders and head be the final thing to lift. Letting the blood pressure settle, allowing your eyes to soften towards a focal point in front of you. Now keep your legs exactly as they are. I'll come to face you and I'll talk you through a position that is usually referred to as Wuji emptiness stance in Qigong practice. So allow your knees to bend to cover at least half of your foot when you're looking down. Let the arms rest in front of your hips and lightly lift your elbows away from one another so that you create a little bit of space between the arms and the torso. Let the front of the body soften in towards the spine so there's a slight curving in. And let the tailbone just gently drop towards the floor. Let the shoulders soften. Possibly let the eyes close for a moment and shift your body weight forwards and back between the balls and heels of your feet. Initially making that quite a big movement where your toes start to lift as you drop into your heels and your heels start to lift as you drop all the way forward to your toes. But over time, make that movement smaller and smaller and smaller until eventually you find that perfect spot where there's equal weight in the ball and heel of the feet. Allow your breath to soften. And gently from here, blinking the eyes open, we'll move through a little standing sequence. As you inhale, lift the arms all the way up and overhead. And as you exhale, turn to the left and release the hands down. Again, let the inhale float you up through the center line, facing forward, and exhale over to the right, releasing the arms. Now, once you have the hang of that movement, close the eyes again so that you can really focus on your own breath and really feeling the intricacies of that movement through your body. So on the inhale, arms lift and there's also a gentle lifting up from the legs. But as you exhale to twist, there's actually a sinking. So the knees bend a little bit more generously. And your whole body starts to come into a sort of moving meditation through this Qigong movement. We'll 
we'll make this our final round. So the next time that you come back from the right side, let's meet in the center with the hands in Wuji again. So hands in front of your hips. And from here, we'll move into separating clouds. So you'll cross the arms in front of the chest without the arms touching. Lift them all the way up and overhead. And from here, turn the palms away from each other as you exhale to release the hands down. Again, if you're linking the movement with the breath, as you inhale, the arms cross, separating the clouds above. Hands turn away from each other as you exhale to release them down. Again, as soon as you have the hang of that movement, close the eyes and start to have that slight billowing action of the knees as you inhale, lifting from the legs. And as you exhale, sinking down, bending the knees. And of course, if you wanted you could also swap the arm that's in front each time you come through the movement. And after this round, you might want to open your eyes as we add a little bit more. So next time that you lift the arms overhead, stay there with the knees bent and we'll move through a sequence that is known as aligning with the four directions. So as you exhale, allow your left hand to drop as you lean over to the west. On the inhale, float the hands through center. Exhale, release the right arm down, side bend to the east. Bring the hands in front of the chest as you inhale. Swim forward so you're in a sort of half folded position. And touch the earth as you fold down to south. Now as you come back up, separating clouds, the hands cross in front of you, reaching for north. Exhale to the I have to think about it now, east, <laughs> inhale up through north and exhale to the west. Let the hands meet in front of your chest, taking a breath stroke forward as you exhale to fall down, touching south. Hands cross in front of you as you inhale to come up to standing, reaching for north. And one more time, each side, release the left arm down to west, inhaling to north, exhale to the east. Palms come in front of the chest, hugging a big tree and swimming forward as you exhale to fold down south, crossing the arms, separating clouds for north. Exhale to the east. Inhale north. Exhale west. Again, palms come in front of the chest. Swimming forward as you inhale halfway and exhale to fold down. Stay for a few breaths here as I turn to face forward again. And slowly, slowly here, again, separating clouds takes you all the way back to north. Slightly different, so we'll have the hands behind the head here and interlace the hands. Take the elbows wide, let the chest lift, but drop the tailbone so you're creating length in the spine, moving it in opposite directions. And with that intention of the chest leading forward as you fold down, Exhale, come halfway. Pressing the head back and resisting that with your hands, engaging the muscles in the back of the spine. And exhale, keep the spine long as you release the crown of the head towards the floor. Finally, allowing the hands to come to your mat. Gently step the right foot all the way back. 
right knee to the floor. Find your way into a lizard lunge with the hands under your shoulders. And we'll move a few times here between this lizard lunge and half split. So as you exhale, draw your hips back, let your front toes lift, but feel free to keep your left knee bent. Inhale to come forward. Let the chest and collarbones open towards the front of the mat. And exhale to draw the hips back, possibly finding a little bit more length in that left hamstring as we move through one final round. Inhale back into your lizard lunge. And exhale into that half split. When you come back into lizard lunge here, we'll take it into twisted lizard. So we'll see if we can float that back foot off the floor towards the sitting bone, shifting our body weight into the right hand and keeping the right elbow soft, reaching for the back foot, possibly catching the outer edge or all the way the ankle of the foot. And then seeing if we can draw the foot a little bit closer towards the sitting bone. So really creating more space in, that fr in the front of our thigh. So preparing for deeper back bends. Staying just for your final few rounds of breath here. Seeing if you can soften a little bit more with each exhale. And gently releasing the foot when you're ready planting the hands underneath the shoulders, stepping the front knee to the back into a tabletop position. And gently here, shift the weight across into your hands and your left knee so that you can float the right heel up towards the ceiling. Either stay here, or if the balance is easy, we'll make our way into half bow. So you could make your left fingertips light, possibly reach them back. Again, option one to stay here, you don't have to bind. But if the foot is within easy reach, you could go for the foot. Or again, choose to use the ankle to really press the foot away from you. Open the chest and expand into that back bend. Remember not to lock your right elbow, so keep a little bit of softness here. Find your balance. And gently, without pinging that top foot, release it all the way back, knee to the floor. On the exhale, sitting bones towards the heels into a child's pose, Balasana. Now, yogi's choice, feel free to rest here. Maybe you choose to take a few extra breaths in downward dog. Or if you prefer and you have a lot of energy to give, come forward as you inhale through a vinyasa. Shoulders on top of the wrist in high plank. Exhale to lower down via the knees or one straight line. Chaturanga Dandasana. Elbows in towards the ribcage. Inhale to roll the shoulders, shoulders open for cobra pose. Bhujangasana. And let the inhale take you back to downward dog, either via the knees or in one straight line. And wherever you are, we'll meet again in that downward dog. Staying for a few rounds of breath. Gently shifting your eyes between your thumbs. Bend your knees generously so that you can walk the feet forward to the front of your yoga mat. Again, step the feet to the outside of the mat. Lengthen the spine as you inhale halfway and with soft knees as you exhale, fold into your legs. Again, hands on top of the shins as you round through the spine, bend the knees to cover half of your foot. Lift the arms up as you stack the vertebra, lift the eyes and interlace the hands the unusual way behind the head. Press the head and hands towards one another, elbows wide. Let the chest lift as you inhale into a standing back bend. Drop the tailbone. Take a moment to breathe here. And on an exhale, pause halfway down.
Again, feel that resistance of the head and the hands, engage the muscles in the back body, reach crown of the head in the opposite direction to your sitting bones and as you exhale, release the crown of the head towards the floor, allow the hands to come down. From here, step your left foot back into that lizard lunge on the second side. Bring the back knee to the floor and again we'll pulse a few times here between lizard lunge and half split. So bring your hands underneath the shoulders. On an exhale, draw the hips back, lift the right toes. Feel free to keep the knee bent. Inhale, plant the foot back to the floor. Draw the hips forward and down, open the collarbones. Exhale to move back into Ardha Hanumanasana, half splits. Final time here, moving through these two postures with our own breath cycle, possibly finding more length in that right hamstring here. Eventually coming back into lizard lunge to stay. And again, we'll see if we can transition this into twisted lizard. So we'll lift our back foot off the ground, reaching it towards the same side sitting bone. Shift the weight into your left hand and soften the left elbow. Take the right hand back, reach for the outer edge of the foot or possibly go all the way for the ankle and see if with each exhale you can draw that heel a little bit closer towards the sitting bone, creating length and space in the front of your thigh. Lengthening those muscles that allow us to deepen our back bends. Gently release the foot when you're ready. Plant the right hand underneath your shoulder, step the front knee all the way to the back and adjust yourself into that tabletop position again. From here, shifting our body weight into the right knee and the hands, we'll float the left heel up towards the ceiling. Possibly again staying here, which is great work, really strong engagement of the hamstrings, or possibly making the right fingertips light and seeing if we can reach the right hand back. Again, you don't have to reach for the foot, but if it's within easy reach, grab the foot or grab the ankle and press it away from your hand so that you're really opening the front of the shoulders, the pectoral muscles, the abdominals, and again, a little bit working into the front of that leg and the hip flexor. Gently release the grip without letting the foot sort of ping away from you. Plant the hands underneath the shoulders, knees underneath the hips as you exhale. Find your way into child's pose. Sitting bones towards the heels, possibly staying there, having a little rest. If you wish to, tuck your toes under and send the sitting bones back into downward facing dog. And of course, if you want to move more, inhale to high plank for your vinyasa. Lower down via the knees or one straight line as you exhale. Let the inhale float the chest into cobra pose and let the exhale carry you back into downward facing dog and we'll meet there. Bring the big toes to touch at the back of the mat. Inhale to lift the left leg up and back. Three-legged dog. Bend the knee for split dog. Let the left foot dangle behind you. Keep the shoulders square towards the front of the mat. Open the front of the leg for a breath here. As you exhale, draw the left knee forward into the chest, shoulders on top of the wrist for tiger's curl, pressing the floor away. And gently here, stepping or shimmying the foot to the front of the mat, making sure that you've got your feet hip distance apart. And with the hands down by your side as you inhale, come up into your high lunge, crown of the head reaching up. Find your focal point to begin with as you straighten the front leg, lift the arms, inhale. 
On the exhale, bend the front knee, take the hands apart into cactus arms, bending at the elbows, lifting the chest. Inhale to lift up, reaching and exhale, bending at the elbow, knees, really pinch the shoulder blades together in the back body. Final time, breathe in to lengthen and exhale to come into that lunge. Now open it up into warrior two by spinning the back heel to the floor, reaching the knuckles apart, allowing the shoulders to soften, your eyes to travel forward over the front ring finger. On an exhale, backhand to the back thigh, reaching back through the left fingertips, lengthen left side of the waist. Inhale, back through warrior two, and exhale, front forearm to the front thigh. Right fingertips going overhead, pinky finger spins to the floor for Parjvakonasana. Of course, feel free to stay in this higher variation. Possibly bottom hand can come to the floor if you want to deepen. Finding a few moments to breathe here. And exhale, top hand comes to the ground, frame your front foot, tuck the back toes under and exhale to step it back into downward facing dog. Bring the big toes to touch at the back of the mat. Inhale to lift your right leg all the way up and back into three-legged dog. Bend the knee to open it up towards the ceiling into split dog. Let the foot dangle behind you, keeping the shoulders square towards the front of the mat. And exhale, draw the right knee forward into the chest, shoulders on top of the wrists. Pressing the floor away actively before you step the foot to the front of the mat. Of course, feel free to use your hands for help. And make sure that you've separated the feet at least hip distance before you inhale with the hands down by your sides to come up into high lunge alanasana. Find that focal point, allow yourself to settle into the balance first. As you inhale, straighten the front leg, lift the arms overhead. As you exhale, bend the front knee, bend the elbows into those cactus arms, lifting through the center of the chest. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale to come into that slight arch of the upper back. One final time, moving with your own breath. And from there, spin the back heel to the floor. Separate the arms into your warrior two. Find your alignment. Make sure the front knee is going over second and third toe. Press into the outer edge of the back foot. Let the knuckles lengthen and the shoulders soften. On an exhale, back hand to the back thigh. Reverse warrior. Right fingertips reach back. Inhale forward into warrior two. Bring your right forearm to the front thigh, left fingertips overhead, spinning the pinky finger edge to the ground. Chest is open and lifted and possibly staying here or taking the bottom hand towards the ground for the last few rounds of breath here. Exhale to release the top hand to the ground. Frame your front foot, tuck the back toes under, to exhale and step back to your downward facing dog. And for the final time here, yogi's choice, possibly stay here, have a rest in child's pose or move through that last vinyasa here. As you inhale, shoulders come forward to a high plank. As you exhale, lowering down via the knees or in one straight line, letting the inhale lift the chest into the back bend of your choice and using the exhale to bring you back into your downward facing dog where we'll eventually meet. 
Gently from here as you inhale, come forward, back into your high plank position, either via the knees or straight line, coming all the way onto your belly. And we'll move through a few variations of locust pose. So we'll start with the legs, have your elbows as wide as the mat, either stacking the hands on top of each other or making two fists so that you can rest the forehead down. And I always have to apologize for any noises that my microphone makes here because it does get a little bit of a battering. We'll start with the left leg. So on your next inhale, lift the left leg up and back. Aim to reach it as far back as you can, really creating length. And then press through the ball of the foot. Stay for your final breath here. On an exhale, release it down. Opposite side, inhale to lift the right leg, reach it as far back as you can and then pressing through the ball of that foot, engaging the muscles in the back leg. On an exhale, gently releasing it to the floor. Now on your next in breath, lifting both legs at the same time, press the balls of the feet away, feel that strong engagement of the legs aiming to find that length in the lower body and exhale to release them back to the ground possibly having a little wiggle of the hips left and right from here bring the hands down by the sides of the hips palms facing towards the ceiling on and inhale press the tops of the feet firmly into the ground lift the chest roll the shoulders back Find that lift in the spine first. Bring your eyes towards, or gaze <laughs> towards the front of your mat rather. And eventually lift the hands off the mat. Spin the palms towards the ground. Use the inhale to lift a little bit higher if you can. Reaching the fingertips actively back. And soften on the exhale. Find your last few rounds of breath here. Exhale, hands underneath your forehead, rest the head all the way down. Again, if you like, wiggle the hips, left and right. On this next round, we'll come into full locust pose. So if you have had any lower back issues in the past or it's something you're currently dealing with, then do please keep your feet at least hip distance apart. Otherwise, if there's no back pain, bring your legs together, big toes and heels touching, almost as if you're wearing a sort of mermaid tail, the legs glue together. Hands again, start down by the hips with the palms facing towards the ceiling. As you inhale, the legs lift, you press through the balls of the feet, shoulders roll back, gaze this forward to the front of your mat so the neck is one long line from the spine and eventually you can lift the hands and turn your palms towards the floor, using the breath to lift you up as you inhale and to soften you down as you exhale. Finding your final few rounds of breath here, really seeing if you can get a little bit of lift and feeling that strong engagement in the back of the body, all the muscles tensing up, embracing that struggle, that feeling of working against gravity. And on your next exhale, coming all the way down, you can either turn the right ear to the floor or again, rest the hands underneath the head. Possibly rocking the hips side to side. And finally here, our last variation. So I'll give you the option to come into full bow pose here. Uh, we've already done half bow to begin with. So uh, you should be vaguely familiar with some of these actions of the pose. But I would say, of course, if you 
have lower back pain, this is not a particularly great pose for you and I would suggest that you come back to locust pose one more round. Um, and equally, if you can't reach your feet here, then don't despair. You can either keep that action of lifting towards your feet and really reaching through the fingertips, or you could also work on locust pose again. Otherwise, if you're going for the full hog here, see if you can reach your hands back either for the outer edges of your feet or all the way for the ankles. If you catch the ankles, flex your toes towards the shin. Bring your knees to hip distance, roll the shoulders back, lift the chest, and then press your feet away from you to lift up as you inhale. And again, finding around five full breaths here, if you can, before you lower down. So that might be faster or slower breaths than mine. Working in your own time frame here. Eventually, as you exhale, lowering down, again, not allowing the feet to ping out, but very gently releasing them, either resting the left ear towards the floor or stacking the hands underneath the head, possibly having a little wiggle of the hips again. Slowly bring the head into center, bring the hands under the shoulders. Make your way all the way back into a child's pose. Feel free to keep the knees together or separate them wide. Hands in front or fingertips pointing back with the palms up. Yogi's choice. If your hands are in front of you for a moment, really press into the hands so that you can draw the sitting bones towards the heels and lengthen the lower back, giving yourself a deeper counter stretch to all those back bends that we've done. Gently, gently plant the hands underneath your shoulders, come into a kneeling position just so you can slip the feet out from underneath you. Now if you know that when you spend some time sitting with the feet in front of you that your spine has a tendency to round then do roll up the back of your yoga mat so that you can place it underneath your sitting bones like so and of course if that's not the case for you then don't worry. I'll come to face you so it's a little bit easier. We'll start with the right heel drawing towards the left sitting bone. And you can either keep the left foot in front of the shin or possibly, if there's enough space in the hips, take the foot all the way across the bottom knee, making sure that your big toe is still firmly planted on the floor. Inhale to lift the left fingertips up towards the ceiling and spin that hand behind you. Reach up through the opposite hand. Inhale, as you exhale, hooking the arm across the thigh, having a sort of high five position of your top hand. Find that length in the spine. See if you can grow a little bit taller as you breathe in. And as you exhale, spinning the chest open towards the left side, finding your version of the twist. And the chin can stay between the collarbones. Possibly you could allow the eyes to travel back. And if you're feeling really brave, then closing the eyes entirely so that you can focus more on the sensations in the spine here. On your next inhale, very gently unraveling the top arm. Planting the hands to the right side as you exhale, bowing down to derotate the spine. Inhale to come back upright. Now you could keep the legs in whichever of these variations you've already got them. If you have no knee issues and again you have that space in the hips, you could bring the knees one on top of the other and have your shins in one straight line. So the lower half of your pose is in Gomukhasana. Uh, 
the lower half of your body is in Gobokasana um, and the top half of our body will turn into eagle arms. So we'll lift the arms all the way up and overhead. As you exhale, sweep the arms down and in front of you, bring the right elbow on top of the left. You could here walk the hands onto your shoulder blades and walk the fingertips towards the spine. If that's a very easy option. You could bring the backs of the hands to touch or possibly double binding the palms in front of your face instead. Fingertips reach towards the ceiling here. See if you can get almost an arch sort of back bend lift through the spine for a moment. Trying as much as you can to straighten the elbows, reaching for the ceiling and spreading the shoulder blades apart. On an exhale, allowing the elbows to come forward, allowing the fingertips to reach towards the ground, maybe rounding the chin towards the chest, possibly resting the forehead on top of the upper arms. Finding a few moments to breathe here. Feeling that deep, deep opening creating that space between the shoulder blades and the spine. And gently from there, coming back upright to release the arms. Now, if you know you've got knee issues, then please just swap the leg that's on top. Otherwise, if you're feeling a little bit fancy and there's no knee problems, plant your hands over to the right side, shift your weight into the hands so that you can bring the left foot flat to the floor and turn 360 degrees to the right so that when you come back facing the same direction, you should end up with the opposite leg on top as if it were by magic you'll have ideally the right heel towards the left sitting, sorry, left heel towards the right sitting bone, either the right foot in front of the shin or possibly all the way across the knee. As you inhale, right fingertips lift, we spin the hand behind the sitting bone. Opposite hands lift as you breathe in. On the exhale, hooking that elbow across the thigh, sort of high five position of the top hand. And again, we find our Matsyandrasana, that seated twist here. So let the inhale lengthen the spine upwards. On the exhale, possibly spinning the chest open a little bit more if there's space to move into. Maybe again, keeping the chin between the collarbones, maybe looking towards the back or possibly closing the eyes so you're not particularly aiming for any part of the room, you're not cranking the neck around to see anything, making our practice a little bit less goal-oriented. Nothing to achieve, just a pose to enjoy. On your next inhale, very gently easing out of that twist, planting the hands to the left side as you exhale, bowing down, derotating the spine. And again, your version of Gomukhasana legs, cow face pose. Uh, so you could keep your top foot as it is. If you again wanted to, you could stack the knees, bring your shins into one line. And from here, finding our eagle arms, we'll lift the arms up and overhead, this time opposite shoulder, sorry, opposite elbow, left elbow on top of the right. And again, either reaching the fingertips for the back of the uh, shoulders towards the spine, possibly backs of the hands touch, or you double bind the palms in front of you. From here, we start in that more back bend variation. So reaching the fingertips up as much as we can. Elbows can start to straighten. Possibly seeing if we can lift up from our abdominal muscles, seeing if the sternum center of the chest can reach towards the ceiling and keeping a soft gaze, possibly closing the eyes at this point in practice. 
on an exhale, starting to hinge forward, rounding the spine, coiling in. Allowing the fingertips to drop towards the floor, possibly elbows resting just behind or in front of the knees. Chin resting on the chest, forehead leaning towards your upper arms. Gently on an inhale, coming back up through center to release the hands, uncrossing your the top leg so that you come into Sukhasana easy pose, your more traditional cross-legged pose, possibly heels in one line. As we get ready to close our practice here, we'll take just a moment with the hands on the knees, allowing the body to come back to its natural breath to let those asymmetrical postures seep in, feeling those sensations in the fronts and backs of the shoulders and our arms. Gently here, bringing the palms to touch in front of your chest, bowing the forehead towards the fingertips. And finally, giving yourself thanks for showing up on your yoga mat to practice despite whatever odds you face today. And possibly using this last moment to plant your sankalpa, that good intention that guides you through the next week, possibly the week after that, possibly the entire year that's ahead of you. The light in me recognizes the light in you. Namaste, Yogi. So thank you so, so much for joining me in today's practice. I hope you enjoyed it. If you made it this far, do let me know how it went in the comments down below. Um, and of course, spread the good, good word with your friends. Uh, if you wanted to find me anywhere else online, all of that information is in the video description. And please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. You know the drill. So hope to see you back on the mat very soon, Yogi. Thank you so much for joining me.